Hello, this is Dave from Dimensional Consulting. Today we are going to talk about root sum squared, or RSS. RSS is a tool that is commonly used when performing a tolerance tag. We need to understand how to use RSS, but more importantly, we need to know when it's appropriate, what assumptions are built into it, and what the results are really telling us. We will examine all of these things. We will start with how to use it. The steps for doing RSS are, perform the limit stack, separate the nominals from the tolerances, establish the total nominal, square each of the plus minus tolerances, sum the squares of the plus minus tolerances and take the square root of this value. The square root of the sum of the squares is the plus minus tolerance for the assembly. Reunite this value with the total of the nominals to establish the RSS limits. Let's look at an example of applying RSS. Our example uses an assembly consisting of six rollers with the dimensions shown. The assembly is shown on the left with max min dimensions. Note that the arithmetic max and min for the assembly is also shown. We have a column for the nominals as well as a total for the nominals. We have a column for the plus minus values. We have a column for the squares of the plus minus values and the total of those values. We take the square root of the total of the squares of the plus minus values, and this is our plus minus for the RSS limits. Note that the max and min RSS limits are a tighter range than the arithmetic limits. So why does RSS work? It goes back to variance, which is the square of the standard deviation. Variance is additive. If you manufacture 1,000 of each component, you will be able to make 1,000 assemblies. For each component, put the 1,000 parts in a bin. Go to each bin of 1,000 parts and measure each part. Calculate the mean. Then take the measured value for each part, subtract the mean, and square the result. Add up the squared results for all 1,000 parts and divide by 1,000. This is the variance for the parts in that bin. Do the same for each of the six bins. Add the resulting variances to get the total variance for the assembly. Then take the parts from all six bins, throw them all into one big bin, do the same thing as above, except divide by 6,000. You get the same result as you did when you added up the variances from the six bins above. This is why variance is additive. Recall that the variance for the assembly is equal to the sum of the variances from the individual parts. We see this in the top line of this slide. Now we do some algebra and make substitutions. First, take the square root of both sides of the equation. Represent standard deviation in terms of tolerance range and capability. Substitute this representation for all of the standard deviations in the equation. Some additional algebra shows the tolerance of the assembly to be equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the tolerances of the components. The above is based on a huge assumption that the capabilities of each of the components is one, a fairly conservative assumption, and that the capability of the assembly is one. The assumption that the capability of the assembly is one gives us a plus or minus three standard deviation distribution. That means that 2,700 assemblies per million will be outside the RSS limits. This is a representation of the RSS limits. Note that the max and min limits are at plus and minus three standard deviations from the mean. Approximately 2,700 parts per million, or assemblies per million, are likely to fall outside of these limits. Since 2,700 assemblies per million are likely to fall outside the RSS limits, these limits will often not meet the requirements for a given design. Therefore, we often multiply the RSS results by a safety factor. With a safety factor of 1.5, the RSS limits would be at plus and minus 4.5 standard deviations away from the mean. Therefore, we would expect 6.8 assemblies per million to fall outside of those limits. 
value of 6.8 assemblies per million being outside the RSS limits with a safety factor is based on the mathematical definition of a normal distribution. This chart shows how many assemblies per million are likely to fall outside the limits for various safety factors. It is all based on the mathematical definition of a normal distribution. This chart is a guide for deciding which safety factor to use. Based on what the consequences are of having a failure, you need to decide how many parts per million outside the spec limits are acceptable. That will determine which safety factor to use. This is another way of showing the information from the previous page. It puts into perspective how the safety factors relate to the distribution for the assembly. For a given safety factor, look at where it falls on the distribution. This gives a perspective on how many parts per million are likely to fall outside of the spec limits associated with that safety factor. That's today's video. If you want to see more tips like this, please subscribe. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. And visit my website at dimensionalconsulting.com.